So you think you're gonna stay in the U.S.? No. <laughs> I have kids. Yes, I have stay in. Me, I'm going back if God help me. Maybe two years. Okay, two years. Yeah, I wanna go there and do a culture. That's awesome. Yeah. Especially now that things are calmed down and you can live there. No, things are okay. Things are okay. Yeah. I can live there. Things are okay. It's not, nothing is wrong. Yeah. But I know. Um, you know, when I'm online, I've seen more and more young African Americans that are living in South America, in Africa, in Asia. You know, I do see some that go to Germany, but I mean, by and large, that's expensive anyway. And why bother? Um, but you can work online and make an okay wage for here that is a ton of money someplace else, and you're not dealing with the bullshit. There, there, there is companies. You don't have to work this time. Yeah, there's companies you can work through. Yeah, there is companies where you can work and make good money. Yeah, I know somebody that's bartended almost all over the world. He travels, he just rolls up into a town, he's like, you need an English-speaking bartender? Usually, where there's tourists, they do need one. He gets a job within a day or two and just uh, you, works. You, 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 you know that. You get there, you can get like a gift, private class. Uh-huh. This rich kids. Tutor. Yeah. yeah. English class. That's what I did. Yeah. If you have five family that you're charging, they say it's hundred dollars a week. That's even cheaper. Yeah. Right? Or you're charging that fifty dollar an hour for English class. You know how much you'll be making? It's a lot of money. A lot. Yeah. Because people want to learn English. They just want to learn English. The American yeah. English. I was teasing my kids. I was telling them that if if my writing fell apart, I was going to teach English in, in South America. They're like, "How are you going to do that?" And I was teasing them that I was going to find a rich drug dealer who wants his kids to speak English. <laughs> They're like, "Mom, you're going to get killed." I'm like, "They're not going to kill me. I'm just teaching the kids." <laughs> I don't need to know what Dad does. Just pay me on time. <laughs> there is a lot of people who go into Asia now. Yeah. Americans. They go to Asia to teach English. Teach English. Now, English. Everybody wants to speak English. It's important. It's very important. I know, like, that's one of the reasons it's sad. So many Amer most Americans don't travel. But when they do, they don't bother to learn the, any of the words or anything of where they're going, usually. Partially because most of the countries, most of the, of the world knows at least a little bit of English and we are so spoiled. We don't even know we're spoiled. We can roll up into a country, not speak a lick of anything and figure out a way around because everybody knows a word or two, you know, and yeah. it's just, wow, we are so privileged that way. <laughs> and we've got that American passport where other countries don't turn us away. Yeah, like, right. We are totally spoiled when it comes to travel. You, you be amazed. You look going now. Uh, like they got the first America. Uh, they, so the first one you could see. And then you put other country. They, they copy the, the style of the voice in the show. The yeah. TV show. You be amazed how people can interpret or they can sing these American songs in English. Oh yeah. Our culture has really been transported all over the world for good and for bad. There's people from outside, but you tell American to sing a song in French. No. They might get Vera Shaka for like. <laughs> they might remember that from, from kindergarten. The only thing they know is class to flip to Shaka. raised by my mom and, the, and my mom um, got me when I was like three and a half and when she got me she said I was speaking gibberish I, I didn't even know how to speak English and, you speak? it turns out I speak in patois. patois yeah I had been um, a, a lesbian couple from New Orleans 
had been keeping, had been taking care of me, and they spoke patois, which is like pidgin French. And so when my mom got me, she thought that I wasn't, that I just hadn't been speaking yet. And really, I was speaking pidgin French. <laughs> and I wish I'd kept it. I wish she'd known because I know she would have, she would have encouraged it. But yeah, when I was like three and a half, when she, and she got me, I was speaking French. <laughs> I literally was only going to stay there for three weeks. And I ended up staying for eight months. And that city just gets under your skin and it's so hard to leave. Like, I miss it right now. I really miss that's New Orleans. That's why you're going yeah. And I have this residency. I'm like, I can't, I can't get back fast enough because I just, I miss the food. I miss my old roommates. I miss my friends. I just miss the way it smells. <laughs> A month. Yeah. No. Because I have, um, I have an art in residency thing that I'm doing in upstate New York afterwards. A friend owns a tiny house, and they just built another tiny house, and they teach, like, um, ecological ar agriculture and stuff to teenagers, and all of, all their interns are leaving at the end of summer, so I'm going to come in and live in the micro house and write my book and get a move on. Farming in a healthy way. Not in a healthy way, but I think in a non healthy way. Because now we got so much population and the need of the food, so the production is not enough to feed the population. Ah, so you're not producing enough. So if they gotta do, you scare people like in America, wow, it's a well, you know what? You can have eco you can have ecological agriculture that produces a ton of food. It's just that but people don't healthy. do it because it's hard work. It's not healthy. Either. No, it is healthy. Yeah, if you raising all kinds of crops without chemicals and stuff, that's what they do. That's what they do. Yeah. Is they they're teaching how to do that? Yeah. How to raise crops without poisoning your water? You know, because you put all those chemicals on the plants and it ends up in your water and then your kids are drinking it. And then you're wondering why your kid's got ADD and has a second, you know, isn't developing properly. But that's interesting that that's something that's a problem because that's something we can help with. Like, African Americans that learn ecological agriculture can go to a third world country and teach it and run farms. Is there really not enough production of food, or is the government not distributing it properly? No, they cannot distribute it. Yeah, because usually that's the case. Usually there's enough food, no, but the people that not. need it don't get it. No, there is money. There is money that can be used for, for the people to produce enough food to feed everybody else. Yeah. So there are no such a thing as food distribution. That there is no system that the food today, there is no money. But there is no money, there is money in the government where there is a billions of dollars. And then the government wanna make a business on their own between them. Yeah. You know, to give this general. So the a government in addition yeah. to being the government, they're also trying to be a middleman business. Yeah, business. And that's never good because when, then you get nepotism and when they're supposed to take that money and invest in people on lands to turn that land to food because people have 20 acres of land and they can only turn one, uh, one, one acre just for food to yeah. them to eat. But if you give them the finance, the money, they'll be able to turn all that 20 acres. And that's a lot of produce. That is a lot of produce. So I have a question because um, here, you know, a lot of our farmers live in the Midwest. California, you know, and then we have this huge system, obviously you're driving one, where we cart this food all over the U.S. and it ends up at grocery stores. Is there a system like that in Congo? What, or does where you, the food is grown, pretty much that's where the food also is eaten? Uh, uh, in Congo, the thing is, uh, Congo ground is fertilized. Uh-huh. We don't put chemicals. So it's good we ground. We yeah, we don't need the water. Congo ground anywhere you put something that thing will grow. Okay. Anywhere. Right? You don't need to put chemical anyhow. So we have time. You know, from January to March is time 
province, they don't have the tractors, they don't have the money to buy the food, the food seed. So they just growing a little bit enough to feed the family. Yeah, they're not growing enough for the for the network. They are no, they are no growing enough for the If they did grow enough, is there a system to get the grain from the farmers to the oh, grocery yeah. stores? There is cars, there is train, there is a, a, a boat. Yeah, it, so the problem isn't the transportation. The problem is the farmers having enough money for the supplies to grow what the land is capable of growing. They don't have the resource to, to turn enough ground to grow, they say, to grow one ton of food. Yeah. You're just growing a little bit to feed your family when you have 100 acres of, of, of ground. Yeah. But the government, they have the money. And then when they're supposed to invest in those people who have the farm, they will invest in between them. This general take one million dollars and go grow like two tons of, of maize. And then he take it to the and feed the soldier and the money come to him. Yeah. Civilians, nothing. So oh that's not good. It is now like like now I can tell you the, the fish that we eat in Congo come from here. Yeah. The chicken come from here. Oh wow! Beef. Uh, and meanwhile, you guys are perfectly capable of we, growing that stuff, but you're not. We are not. And then I called out, come, asked them, the fish we're eating coming from Europe is not coming from the ocean. It's not coming from the, the, the man. It's coming from the farms. Yeah, it's factory farm fish. So, which isn't as healthy anyway. A lot of the nutrients yeah, we're are out of it. Why don't we throw those fish aside? Yeah. You know, I have this like, little knowledge. Yeah, a, a lot. I think a lot of people don't realize just how fertile Africa is. Oh, you know, like Somalia and Eritrea, that used to be the breadbasket of the world. That's why their food is so darn good. <laughs> you know, because they had this history of every time they get invaded, they would take on the spices and the foods, and so they have like this amazing cuisine that's a mishmash I watched, of cultures. I this video, this mission, this white dude from England. Seed aside for the next and, uh, year. If you are uh, 
thousand dollars they give to this lady. She don't have no farm. She just has a house. They tell her, okay, you, you're gonna dig here. You're gonna put this fish. It's a thousand dollars. Buy the food. Feed them. After six months, we're gonna come check on you. Then when you start selling, you start paying us little by little. Uh -huh. you give her the little fish. They give her everything. She starts. Give a thousand dollars after a year, she starts taking them back little by little with little entries. Simple. So she's growing fish, she's getting her income, and she's feeding, she feeding the population. Yeah. It's just. It makes it's such simple and obvious sense, and it's not being and done. My government, yeah. Corruption at the government level can really wreak havoc on a country, regardless of the size. Yeah, doesn't matter how big or how small. Like, if you bring here, drink there, drink there, drink there. How, how America? So why America never died in time? You know, all these places. There is nothing. There is no food growing. Yeah. But it's growing where there is the ground is fertilized. Fertilized. It. It's growing. You know. Yeah. And they doing it exchange. So 